good morning and welcome to the Powerhouse Church. We want to see the Lord in our lives. Father, we worship, we praise you, we give you glory. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart.
our mission statement. As a welcoming committee of faith, our mission is to glorify God by building a local church family which extends the kingdom of God educationally, mind, physically, body, and spiritually, spirit, in accordance with God's word. Our statement of faith, we believe the Bible to be the only infallible written word of God. We believe that there is one God, eternally existent in three manifestations, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which is the totality of divine completeness. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us through the redemptive work of Christ being on the cross. We believe in the indwelling of the Holy Ghost according to Acts 2.4, which enables Christians to live a holy and sanctified life. We believe that faith in God through Jesus provides healing for humankind in answer to believing prayer. We believe that this faith is given to all men in spite of race, creed, or color. All can be saved. A doctor walks in with bad news and good. The bad news? You have a fatal disease. The good news? There is a cure. A treatment that is 100% effective. All you have to do is accept it. What would you choose? Every day, millions of people say no to the cure. They choose to live with the disease. Or they choose to believe it doesn't exist. And the symptoms are everywhere. Depression, broken families, greed, selfishness, corruption, escalating violence and hate for one another, murder, terrorism, abuse. What is that condition that affects us all? What is the sickness or disease we cannot shake? It's called sin. And we're all born with it. We do what we want to do. We do what's best for us. We do what feels good. It comes natural to all of us and it stains us. It opens up a great divide between us and our creator because it's not how we're created to live. We were designed by God for more, to be part of something bigger than just these simple things, to know our creator as father, to follow him, and to live for him. More than anything, he desires a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. But it's impossible. Our sin and our imperfections are incompatible. We may try to have our good deeds our way our bad, but they can never get us closer to a perfect God. That is why Jesus came to us. He sent his son not as a king or a mighty warrior, but as a baby born in a stable, born to die on the cross for our sins, to pay for our mistakes. Our sins with his perfect blood with his death he bridged the great divide the punishment that we deserve he took upon himself with his resurrection he conquered the grave he made a way for us when there seems to be no way so how do we respond please make this your prayer say God I am a sinner imperfect messed up going my own way I trust today in the blood of Jesus to wash all my sins away and I invite you into my life and I give you control and I ask for your Holy Spirit to come and live inside of me if you will say these words and mean it with all of your heart you will become a Christian today right now right where you are and God will hear you the cure is before you and your family what will you choose? To learn more, please come to our website and we'll help you in any way that we can. More than anything, please do something today.
Hello, this is Bishop Darrell L. Hill from the Powerhouse Church in New York. I am so glad and so excited to greet you and to talk to you about something God has laid on our heart. The great Martin Luther King Jr. said, one of the most persistent and urgent questions is what are you doing for others? And with that in mind, God has led us to start what we call Power Feed. I would like for you to be a part of that. You can sow into Power Feed. We have been compelled to feed 100 families with $100 worth of groceries. I know you want to be a part of that. What an amazing feeling to bless someone else. Listen, you can sow into that by going to dollar sign Daryl Hill, cash app that, $150, $20, whatever you give, it will be most appreciated. Once again, you can continue to sow to dollar sign Daryl Hill at cash app, or if you know any families who are in need, our goal is to serve a hundred families with a hundred dollars of groceries. I know we can do it together. Remember, if you got the faith, God has the power. Power feed. God bless you. Praise the Lord and welcome once again to the Powerhouse Church. We are so excited and elated that you decided to share your time and space with us on today. There is a mighty word from the Lord. I want to take this time to say welcome to all of our visitors, those of you who are visiting us and you decided to log on and share in this experience. Also to those of you who have been constantly, amen, supporting Power Feed and Power Church. Thank you so much for your labor of love. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. The Lord has graciously blessed me with so many talents and gifts right here at the powerhouse church and I'm so excited to sit back and hear what thus saith the Lord I want you to start putting your clapping hands up on the screen as we receive the ministry of minister Freddie Washington come on let's praise God for the man of God Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And now wherever you are, let's just lift our hands and give Jesus some worship. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy of every bit of glory, every bit of honor, and every bit of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go straight into the word of God. Thank you so much, Bishop, for this opportunity to stand before God's people, even virtually. And we thank God for the opportunity and for his calling. We're going to the word of God. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verses 15 through 17. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. That's Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. We'll commence reading at verse 15 and conclude at verse 17. And the word of the Lord says, And he said, Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go down against them, Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the valley, east of the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, and the Lord will be with you. One more time, the A clause of verse 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. 
Now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer, less of me and more of you in Jesus' name. And very briefly, I just want to talk to you from the theme, positioned for victory. Positioned for victory. We venture in on this scripture as Jehaziel is instructing Jehoshaphat regarding a planned joint attack on Judah by the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Edomites, uh, particularly those from the region of Mount Seir. These three nations come against Jehoshaphat in battle and then Jehoshaphat is warned by some men that there are more men coming for him from Edom. And the Bible says that Jehoshaphat was afraid. Uh, we often misconstrue courage as the absence of fear, but courage, in fact, doesn't mean that fear isn't present. It simply means you've made a decision to push past your fear and do what needs to be done. A uh, fear is a natural reaction to danger or at the very least to our mind and our bodies perceiving danger. Uh, fear is a built in defense mechanism that says proceed with caution. Uh, but unmanaged fear can be debilitating and unmanaged fear can be crippling. Unmanaged fear can put us in more danger than the perceived danger we were afraid of to begin with. But Jehoshaphat here manages his fear. Yeah, the first thing he does is he sets his face to seek the Lord and then he proclaims a fast throughout Judah. And then Jehoshaphat begins to remind God of some things. And it wasn't that God needs reminding because he's all seeing and he's all knowing and he doesn't really need reminders. He remembers it all. But Jehoshaphat starts to bring some things to God's attention. He asks God a question. He says, are you not the God in heaven? Are you the God who fulfilled your promise to us and you gave us this land? Isn't that you? And now the men of Ammon and of Moab and Mount Seir are coming to try and overtake us and push us out of what you promised was ours. And then he reminds God that God wouldn't let Israel touch them when Israel fled Egypt. And he says, I know that you're not going to forsake us now. I know that you're not going to let them take this land from us after we were obedient to your command, after we didn't touch them when you told us not to. He said, God, the truth is that we are powerless against them. There's too many of them and there's no way that we can win this battle. But God, you have all power. Uh, you can do anything. You can defeat anyone. No one can defeat you. And so now, God, we're looking to you. And it's at this point that the Spirit of the Lord comes upon Jehaziel. And it's significant here that God uses Jehaziel in this moment uh, because the name Jehaziel is translated to mean God sees. And so in this moment, as Jehaziel begins speaking, God's instructing to Je Jehoshaphat and to Judah, uh, it was a reminder of God's omniscience. Uh, God using Jehaziel is significant because it's a reminder to Jehoshaphat uh, that God did not need a reminder. Uh, why? Because God had not forgotten about them. It was a reminder that God was still looking out for them. It was a reminder that God all already knew what was coming even before they did. And so now we get here to the scripture that we read, uh, verse 15 here, and Jehaziel is, uh, says here that God is instructing Judah not to be afraid. Uh, he says, I know that they're in great number, 
Uh, but this isn't even a battle that you're going to have to fight. This one here, this one is mine. I didn't forget the command that I gave you not to touch them. And I didn't forget that you obeyed my command when I gave it. I, I didn't forget the promise that I made to Abraham. And I didn't forget that I declared this to be your land. If they're rising up against you, then they're coming against me. And immediately... Jehoshaphat bows his head to the ground and then immediately all of Judah falls to the ground and begins to worship. They hear the word of the Lord and then they take on a posture of worship. God speaks and immediately they take on a posture of worship. Judah immediately resorted to what it is that they knew. Uh, yeah, they were a people who even when they strayed and even when they messed up, even when they did the wrong thing, even when they did the wrong thing and turned the wrong way, they understood and knew the importance of worship. Huh? Not just praise, but worship. There's something special about worship because it acknowledges God to do a thing even when nothing is being done. Yes, worship acknowledges God's power to perform and worship acknowledges his capability to provide. Worship acknowledges his ability to heal. Worship acknowledges God and honors God simply for being I am. And Jude had learned the art of worship. They learned the importance of worship. They, they understood that it was, the, it was worship that would sustain them. And, and they understood that it was worship that would keep them. And in this moment, they were symbolically saying, as Daniel said, God will save us from the hand of our enemy. But even if he doesn't, we know that he is able. See, that's what worship does. It says, I'm trusting God so much to move on my behalf. Worship says that I trust God is going to work this out for me. Worship says that I trust God is going to open this door. It says that I trust God is going to spare my life. It says that I trust God is going to do it. But even if he doesn't, I have no doubt that he's able. And immediately, immediately after the assembly went into worship, uh, the minstrels, the singers, and the musicians they got up and they began praising. The Bible says they praised God with a loud voice. Uh, what was important here is that even before they went into battle, they assumed a position of victory. Yeah, they assumed the position. The phrase assume the position often has a negative connotation. Uh, when we think of the phrase assume the position, we tend to think of an officer telling someone to turn around and either put their hands out extended or put their hands against an object so that they can be searched. And to some degree, that's what Judah did. Uh, yeah, they turned away from what would have made sense in this situation. They turned away from training for battle and they turned away from coming up with strategies on how to beat their enemy. And they turned to God and they put their hands on the solid foundation. And like David in this moment, they were saying, search me, O God, and know my heart test me and know my anxious thoughts but the phrase assume the position it has another definition that's attached to it assume the position also means to take over the roles and responsibilities of a particular job assume the position also means to take over the roles and the responsibilities of a particular job and that's what Judah did here Judah assumed the position Jehoshaphat immediately went into prayer and the people immediately went into worship and the, uh, the minstrels immediately went into praise and into song no one waited notice no one waited for the instruction on what to do because this was second nature to them everyone knew the posture they were supposed to take everyone knew their position the people weren't trying to overpray or out pray 
Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat didn't try to outsing the minstrels. Everyone was in their proper position at the right time so that they would get the victory. And they all understood one thing. They understood that while some positions may have been a little more visible than others, and while some positions may have gotten a little more exposure than others, and while some positions may be a little more utilized than others, each position was important and each position was necessary for accomplishing their goal. Jehoshaphat didn't think that because he was king uh, that the Levites and the Kohathites and the Korahites were beneath him. Why? Because he understood that they were a part of the team. And the Levites didn't think that because they got to sing and because they got to regularly be a part of the service and because they were the ones who stood at the temple doors, uh, uh, they didn't think that the people were beneath them. Why? Because they understood that everyone was a part of the team. And the people didn't complain that they didn't get to sing. And they didn't complain that they didn't get to stand at the temple gate. And they didn't get and they didn't complain that they didn't get to pray or that they didn't get to prophesy. Why? Because they knew that their position as a worshiper was just as important as all of those other positions were to the functionality of the team and that is what God is looking for from us that is what he desires from us he's looking for us to be in position God has already spoken victory over us God has already spoken victory over our lives he's already spoken victory over our children he's already spoken victory over our churches he's already spoken victory over our finances he's, he's already spoken victory over our ministries but God is looking for us to assume the position not the position we want and not even the position that he's promised us because God has promised us some things but God is looking for us to assume the position that he's calling us to right now there's a position that God is calling you to for this particular time yeah Jehoram was destined to become king after his father Jehoshaphat but that wasn't his position in that moment and so he did not try to function in it. Uh, Jehoram assumed his position. God is saying like Peter wrote humble yourselves. Be content with where I placed you and at the right time I will lift you up. Ah, uh, Yes, God told Judah to stand firm and to hold their position. And the next morning, Jehoshaphat goes before the people. And Jehoshaphat begins to speak to the people. And he says, hear me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem believe in the Lord your God and you will be established believe in his prophets and you will succeed Jehoshaphat recognized that as the leader it was his job to speak to the people and to remind them what God had said he understood that sometimes in the midst of fear and sometimes in the midst of uncertainty that people can be quick to forget and so Jehoshaphat went and he gave Judah a motivational speech he reminded Judah not to be afraid he reminded Judah that God had already spoken and then Jehoshaphat appointed singers and he appointed praisers to go before the army he selected a specific group of people to serve as his front line. Last night they were in corporate worship, but this morning he selects praisers. The Bible doesn't say, but I imagine them marching along and singing David's psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And the Bible says that as soon as the praise team began shouting and praising, the Bible says God sets an ambush against Judah's enemies. And I can imagine them being somewhere around the second verse to David's 27th Psalm, where it says, when the wicked even my enemies and my foes came upon me. 
to eat at my flesh they stumbled and fell yes he did yes they did and in the front line as the front line sang praises the Ammonites the Bible says and the Moanite Moabites mistakenly killed the men from Mount Seir and then not knowing what was going on or whether they had been betrayed the Bible says that the Ammonites and the Moabites started attacking each other and the Bible says in their confusion and in their haste all of them ended up dead and when Judah went to clean up their bodies the Bible says that they found more money and the Bible says that they found more clothing and the Bible says that they found more valuables than they could even carry and it took them three days to pick it all up and move it and I submit to you today that God is about to blow your mind why because not only is he about to give you the victory that you've been praying for not only is he about to give you the victory that you've been fasting for but God is about to add some bonus stuff to this victory God is about to give you an add-on to this victory God is about to give you an add-on to this victory there's more stuff attached to this victory there's more victories behind this victory there's more favor attached to this victory there's more grace attached to this victory there's more anointing attached to this victory God is about to blow your mind he's about to blow your mind yes he is there's some bonus stuff that comes along with this battle you see it was customary for the winning army to take the valuables of their dead opponents following the battle but this was more than Judah expected it took them three days to move it all and with this victory God is about to give you more than you ever expected God is about to do exceedingly and he's about to do abundantly above all you could ask or think yes he is according to his riches and glory yes he is God is about to blow your mind and it doesn't take much all you have to do is assume the position assume the position Judah understood that all they had to do was assume the position immediately they went into worship immediately they began praising him and I submit to you today that all it takes is for you to assume the position assume a position of worship assume a position of gratitude assume a position of praise lift up your head oh you gates and be lifted up the everlasting doors and the king of glory he will give you the victory he will sustain you you are already positioned for victory hold your position hold your position stay in worship stay in praise it may look hard now but keep praising it may seem rough now but keep worshiping keep giving god glory yeah, yeah. and just like the people here god is gonna blow your mind he's gonna blow your mind he's gonna blow your mind yes he is Hold your position. 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 No matter what it looks like, hold your position. No matter what it looks like, hold your position. Hold your position. Hold your position. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. Keep lifting him up. Keep glorifying. Keep magnifying. And the King of Glory. And the King of Glory, and the King of Glory, He shall come in. Hold your position. Hold your position. Hold your position. There are some things that God is about to do on your behalf. There are some things that God is about to work out on your behalf. You went through some things, and you had pride sometimes. There were many nights that you cried alone, but all of that was preparation for what God is bringing you to. Yes, he is. Yes, he did. He prepared you. He prepared you for such a time as this. Hold your position. Hold your position. Hold your position. Hold your position. Yes. 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 Yeah!
worship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. I hear God saying that he's about to do something miraculous. He's about to do something extraordinary. He's about to move out of the ordinary. But all you have to do is keep a position of praise. All you have to do is keep in a, a posture of worship. All you have to do is keep in a position of prayer. Hallelujah. In this season, God is calling us to prayer. And in this season, God is calling us to worship Him. We already have the victory. We are already positioned for victory. Don't move. It doesn't matter what it seems like. Don't move. There are going to be things that try to push you from where you are. But stand after you pray and cry. After you toss and turn. After you toil. Stand firm and hold your position. Hold your position. Yes! 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 Hold your position. Hold your position. Hold your position. This is a position of victory. This is a position of victory. We are positioned for victory. We are positioned for greatness. We are positioned for more than enough. Hold your position. Yeah! Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold your position. Hold your position. Hold your position. Hold your position. This battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. You don't have to fight, you don't have to war, you don't have to talk. This battle is the Lord's, this battle is the Lord's, this battle is the Lord's. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? Because I feel in my spirit, I don't know about anybody else. I just want to dance real quick. So just give me a little bit. And here's why. Here's why. The Bible says that it took them three days to get all the valuables, all the riches, everything that was left behind from their enemies.
conquered it in one day. But when it came to taking the spoil, getting the reward, it took them three days to recover it all. Three days to recover what they beat in one day. God said, you're going to beat it in one day, but your reward is going to take three days of collecting. I need somebody who believes God that the next three days in your life, you're going to recover reward. You're going to recover blessing. Oh, put those clapping hands up and praise Him right in your house. Yes! Glory to God. Hey! Glory to God. What a word from the Lord. I know some of you are dancing right in your house. Some of you are praising God right where you are. Bless the name of God. Amen. And we thank and praise God for this mighty man of God. Amen. Come on, let's put up some clapping hands and thank and praise God for Minister Freddie Washington. Did a fantastic job. Bless the name of God. And proclaiming the word of the Lord on today. Listen, it will be remiss of us to praise God and enjoy the spoil of defeating sin and the enemy without affording you the opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. That's what we do. We preach and sing and minister to win souls to the kingdom of God. There may be someone here who do not know the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior. I want you just to point your right hand towards the screen and follow after me. I want to pray with you. You can get saved right now. Bless the name of God. Amen. As those of you pointing your right hand towards the screen, to accept the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior. May, maybe you didn't hear it upon its premiere, but you, somebody sent it to you. And you're saying, I got to get with a God. I got to get connected with God who will give me victory in one day and allow me to reap the spoils for three days. Bless the name of God. Come on, point your right hand in that direction of the screen father god in the name of jesus we thank you and we praise you for giving us the divine opportunity whereby we shall be saved by your son jesus we thank you god for you said in your word god after we have confessed our sins and confessed our faults declaring we are sinners we've messed up we made mistakes we've broken your law broken your word but lord we confess you said that after we confess God that all we have to do is accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior we must believe that you sent him through immaculate conception that he lived and suffered under Pontius Pilate that he was beaten crucified and put up on a cross and after giving up the ghost placed in the borrowed tomb and three days later he rose with all power in his hand you said if we believe this we shall be saved by faith we thank you for your grace. Thank you for saving us. In the mighty master's name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of God. You're saved. And I pray the Lord will fill you with the spirit of God. Right where you are. Bless the name of God. We thank and praise God. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. I know you have enjoyed the services thus this far. Amen. But we believe in sowing seed. 
Amen. At this time, we're going to ask for all of our tithers to come and prepare yourselves. This is a blessed house because we are a tithing house. We believe in the giving of the tenth. Bless the name of God. Amen. Thank and praise God. Tithers, get that tenth. Come on, start putting it up. I am a tither. I am a tither. Bless the name of God. We believe in tithing and giving 10% of what we earned back to the Lord. Amen. Put it up. I am a tither. Amen. Do not put the amount. Amen. Just put, I am a tither. We thank and praise God. Amen. Soon as you get that tithe, amen, and prepare yourselves, I want you to repeat after me. I hereby enter into this covenant, this sacred covenant with God, to tie to the source of my spiritual teachings. I do this with the understanding that God did not institute the tithe to bring us under the law. But to get blessings to me and my household I also understand that this is a sacred agreement between me and God I'm invoking this relationship and bringing it to the forefront of my life Father God in the name of Jesus we thank you and we praise for these your tithers we ask that you bless them according to your word for you said in your word if we will prove you now here with the tenth that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing we don't even have room enough to receive you said in your word that you have rebuked the devourer for our sake and that our vine should have cast his fruit before season but in due season it will certainly come to pass and all nations shall call us blessed we take you at your word now Father we pray God that you do more for these than they can anticipate in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tithers, come on. Put it up. I am a tither. Come on. Bless the name of God. Amen. We thank and praise God. Amen. What a mighty word. Bless the name of God. Amen. We have been in this month uh, talking about preparation. And we believe in God to prepare us for something greater, something bigger. Bless the name of God. We've been sowing into that. We've been giving into that. Thank you so much. And while we have been waiting on God to release our blessing, we have been blessing others. Amen. Through Power Feed. And I want to say thank you for those of you who supported Power Feed and who continue to support Power Feed. Thank you so much. We bless the name of God. Amen. At this time, amen. I want you all to prepare yourself to give. Amen. I believe in giving. Bless the name of God. Amen. This word has blessed me. Amen. And I am going to sow. Amen. Come on, prepare yourselves. I need those of you who can and will get your seed of $100 and start posting it up. Amen. I am asking you to do something that I am doing myself. Bless the name of God. I post it up. Amen. We are not ashamed to sow seed into good ground and sow seed into the kingdom of God. Amen. Bless the name of God. People in the world, they post their videos. They post their money. They post whatever they want. Their jewelry, their cars, houses. Bless the name of God. We're posting up seed. We're sowing into the kingdom of God. Come on, those of you who's sowing that hundred. Amen. I know there's more of you who can do it. I want you to do it. Amen. And believe and trust God. Yes, even in the midst of a pandemic, we've been tithing and sowing and God has been blessing amen I've received so many different victory reports amen people the Lord is blessing them with new careers not jobs careers bless the name of God amen changing careers and people being being blessed with cars and houses and ownership we think and praise God because we've been believing and trusting God amen Bishop, I don't have 100 but I set aside $50. You can be just as blessed. It's not the amount you give, but the spirit in which you give it. Amen. The Lord love it for cheerful giver. Come on, sow that 50. Those of you who are sowing that 50, come on, post it up. Bless the name of God. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I see sometimes some of you post it in advance. Amen. Bless the name of God. Post it up. Amen. We think and praise God. We believe in sowing. Amen. Do I have any witnesses? Start posting up. Amen. That I am a witness. God will do it. He has done it. 
Amen. And he is in the midst of doing it. Bless the name of God. We thank and praise God. Bishop, I don't have 50, but I set aside $25 that I can sow. Amen. I want you to sow that. Amen. Come on, get that $50, uh, that $25 and sow it. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Somebody needs to sow 50. Amen. You were preparing to sow the 25, but God says, trust me and do it double. Bless the name of God. Amen. We bless the name of God. Get that 25 and sow it. Come on, post it up. Bless the name of God. Listen, I don't care what you have. Amen. Post it up. Amen. Whatever you have, 20, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, quarter, dime, nickel, penny, whatever you have, make sure you post your seed. Do not be ashamed. It's going towards the Lord's work. Amen. We thank and praise God. Come on. Sow it, sow it, sow it, sow it, and God will grow it. Amen. We believe God for it. Amen. Thank you so much for sowing. Amen. We have been in the midst of this $8 seed. Amen. I don't know. The Lord gave it to me months ago. Amen. And I've been sharing it with the church when we were in person worship. And now we're sharing it. Amen. While we're virtual. Bless the name of God. And I just believe God to do some amazing things. And since we've been doing it, I've been getting so many testimonials. Amen. About what God is doing. Amen. Even right now in the midst of a pandemic. I'm telling you. Amen. I I wish I had somebody who would just post it up like you you're talking right it's me amen the Lord's been blessing me bless the name of God get that eight dollar seed I want you to post post it up amen post that eight dollars post that eight dollars we're going to pray together amen everybody praying all together come on I'm posting up my eight dollars amen bless the name of God I give I give two extra for my two children bless the name of God amen sometimes you got to sow Job Job was a righteous man upright screweth evil amen he made sacrifices for himself and his children and his family bless the name of God bless the name of God come on come on sacrifice that eight amen eight is the number of new beginnings and we believe God to do something brand new amen as we approach amen the second half of this tumultuous year amen we believe that the second half is going to be in our favor we believe and trust God amen get that eight dollars let us pray we're praying all together bless the name of God father God we thank you and we praise you for these your sowers we ask that you bless them according to your word for you said in your word you give a seed to sow and bread to the eater you also stated in your word given it shall be given unto us in good measure press down shall you gather and running over shall men give unto our bosoms we take you at your word now father we pray God that you do more for these than they can anticipate in Jesus name we pray amen Man, bless the name of God. Listen, this was a mighty word, amen, from the Lord, amen, that we ought not to give up. We ought to continue and push forward, amen, because the Lord is going to give us victory in whatever we're fighting, whatever we're up against. We're up against some things right now, but I believe God, he's going to give us the victory. The battle is the Lord's. I believe it. Bless the name of God. I want to pray with you before we close out. Amen. Some of you are facing some things. Amen. You haven't shared with anyone. But the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. All you need to do is get in prayer. Get in worship. Amen. Begin to give God glory. Amen. I started thanking God for the wonderful things he's doing. There's some things that's been held up. I need him to release this week. And I'm believing and trusting God. Bless the name of God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the man of God, the vessel you've used on today. We pray, God, that you would refill him for all the virtue that have gone out of him. God, we pray, God, that you will replenish him, God. Anoint him even the more. Strengthen him. Encourage him. Father, we thank you for his life and his ministry. We ask God that you would open doors for him that no man can close in the mighty name of Jesus. We give your name the glory and honor. Now, Father, we pray, God, for these who are here. Father, we ask God, those who are present virtually, we ask God that you would touch them right now. You know every situation. You know every fight that's before us. Father, we ask God, as the man of God stated, 
that you will give us a mind to worship you in the midst of it not worry but worship you we thank you for it and we give you glory and give you honor and give you praise because we declare victory for the next three days we will be collecting good news the next three days we will collect God stuff that we needed father in the name of Jesus money's coming from all sorts of directions in the next three days we believe it by faith God something that's been brewing is going to turn around in our favor in the next three days in Jesus' name we pray amen somebody put the clap of hands up God bless you we thank you for sharing your time and space with us once again amen God is so good. Amen. Remember, if you got the faith, God has the power. God bless you. What a powerful service we had today. Thank you once again for sharing your time and space with us. We want you to stay connected with us by going to our Facebook page, The Powerhouse Church in Y, or go to our website, www.powerhousechurchny.org Once again, thank you so much for sharing your time and space, whether it's on Facebook or in person. We're excited to have you here. Remember, if you got the faith, God has the power. The power.